Okay, so this video is going to be a follow-up video to the last uh, video that I posted, which showed how to set up a kite and how to set up the basic camera settings for how to take this kind of photograph, where we're shooting long exposure photographs of a, a kite in flight with lights mounted to it so that we can get this really cool kind of uh, light trail effect. And in this video, I'm going to show how to uh, take those photos that you took out in the field and put them together to make something that looks pretty cool. Let's uh, use this uh, as, as an example. We're going to use this set of um, uh, photos here as an example. Uh, first, though, if you haven't seen uh, any of my other work, if you don't follow me on uh, Instagram at Tony Ragusea or on Facebook at Tony Ragusea, um, uh, let me show you a couple of final products here just so that uh, you can have a reference for what we're doing. Okay, so we've got these shots as, as an example. Um, let's, uh, let's start by opening up one down here. Okay, so this looks uh, pretty cool, right? Um, we're in Adobe Lightroom CC to work on this. Uh, a lot of people prefer Adobe Lightroom Classic, uh, that's fine, uh, but they, they both largely do the same thing and uh, for our purposes it won't matter which one you use. Now as you can see over here, I've already made a lot of adjustments to this image, but let's uh, try to go back to the original uh, version. So. Um, here is the original version of the picture. So this, this is the raw file. And I encourage you when you take these photos, set your camera for raw format when you take the pictures because you're gonna want as much control over these images as you can. Um, we're gonna be manipulating a lot of settings. So don't let the camera do that for you. You wanna uh, have total control. So take uh, 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 raw format fo uh, photos. And, um, and this is what it looks like in the RAW format. So in RAW, what we can see is that um, uh, there's some things we'd like to change about this photo. Um, the lights are not as, as prominent and saturated as we might like. Uh, they could really pop and stand out a lot more, I think. And the sky behind it is a little weird. So it's very yellow, and uh, that's partly because of uh, uh, light pollution from nearby a town. Um, uh, but the, the sky is looking a little too yellow for me. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and we can, well, we can make some adjustments to things right here in, uh, in Lightroom and then finish our work in Photoshop. So we could uh, make adjustments to our photo right here. Uh, we could tweak the color temperature and a lot of other things here. Um, and then uh, uh, we could apply this uh, set of settings that we just created to all of these images by copying and pasting. So uh, selecting uh, one uh, image here, so just by Command C, and then select all the images that you want to paste it to and go Command V. And, uh, and you get uh, those, those settings applied to all of the images. So we could do that and then export these files to Photoshop. Um, another way to do it would be to, let's go back to the uh, original, copy the original settings back to all of our photos. So basically we're, we're going back to the original raw file on all of these images. So we can do that and, and make all the adjustments that we want to make in Photoshop. We could do that too. So let's try that. Um, we've got a, a couple of dozen photos here. What we're going to do is we're going to select them all. And actually, before we do that, uh, let me point something out here. So in this photo, you can see that there's actually a little bit of camera shake here. Um, you can see there's a little blur there from camera shake. Now that's not from me bumping into the camera. Uh, it was a very windy night, the night that I was taking these pictures, and probably what happened was that there was a gust of wind and it actually uh, bumped the camera and caused it to move a little bit, which is why it's important if you're gonna be out taking kite uh, shots when it's really windy, 
you're going to want to make sure that you're either using a really heavy tripod or you're going to want to weight that tripod down with something heavy like a sandbag or something uh, to try to minimize uh, that kind of uh, uh, jerkiness in the camera from wind. Now, fortunately, uh, the rest of my shots here do not have camera shake, and you can see that in all of these other shots. The, they're all shake-free. So we've got a lot of really cool shots to work with here. And, you know, we could just keep one and work on one. Like, this is a pretty cool-looking shot to me. You know, we could just refine this one image and uh, we could mess with the settings and maybe increase the contrast or uh, whatever. We could you know, try to bring down some of the darks, uh, uh, bring down some of the highlights, uh, turn up the saturation a bit on the lights. I don't know. You keep uh, playing with it to, to make it look like how you like. And, you know, and this could be a great final product. Um, you may want to click these boxes down here to remove chromatic aberration uh, and also to enable lens correction if you're able to select a profile for the lens that you, are ha that you have on your camera. Uh, you can do that here. You don't have to do this. Um, and, uh, and you can do it before you export to Photoshop or you can do it in Photoshop. It doesn't matter. But um, for now, we're just going to, uh, like I said, uh, I want to show you a more complicated process where we're compositing uh, multiple shots together. So in, in this example, we're going to go back to our original settings, right? We're going to take away all of the settings that we just did. And we're going to come back here and we're going to select all of our images and we're going to export them. So we're going to hit the export button up here and we're going to export them. We could export them as TIFFs um, if we did all of our tweaking and color correction in Lightroom and then just wanted to use Photoshop for compositing. Then what we would do is export all the images as TIFF files so that we don't lose any information in the image. We would not want to save them as JPEGs. We would want to save them as TIFFs and we would want to save them as 16-bit TIFFs um, uh, because that way we'll definitely not lose any uh, information uh, in the image. Um, these will create much bigger files if you switch from 8 bits to 16 bits. Uh, so it will, they, will, they will eat up quite a lot of hard disk space. But um, that's the best way to preserve as much information as possible. So you don't have to do 16 bits. You could do 8 bits if you want. But uh, we're going to go with 16 bits full-size TIFF. That's what we would do if uh, we had already made a lot of adjustments in Lightroom. But um, we're just working with the raw files here. We're going to do our adjustments in Photoshop. So um, let's go to Original uh, plus Settings. That's the other uh, option that we have to work with here. And we're going to export our 16 photos. And we're going to export them to a folder, just pick a folder. I have a few just random folders on my computer um, desktop and I've exported them all to that folder. Now, we're going to switch over to Photoshop for the rest of the work that we're gonna do. Next, go up to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. What this is going to do is it's going to bring in all of those files into one workspace rather than opening them each up as its own workspace, which would be quite a mess of, of tabs and then you'd have to copy and paste and uh, get them all into one workspace. Uh, and that's just more work than uh, we need. So this saves us a lot of time by um, allowing us to import all of those images into one workspace at the same time. We're going to browse to find them, okay? Uh, and I happen to know that they're over here. Uh, we know that these are our files. They are in uh, RAW format. CR3 is the RAW format for Canon cameras, which is what I use. And, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to select by just Command-A 
we're going to select all of the uh, raw files here. We don't care about the settings file, this XMP file. It doesn't matter. And then we're going to hit OK. Um, <clears throat> there's this checkbox that, that is sometimes super useful. Aut attempt to automatically align source images. This is really nice if maybe you have bumped your camera a little bit and, um, and you're trying to make all of your images line up with each other. Um, but in this case, we're not going to check this box. Um, I'm not sure what would happen if we did. It, uh, it may create some pretty bizarre effects because of all of the motion blur in the image um, from the kite. Uh, that might confuse Photoshop, and, uh, and I don't need to do it anyway because I know that uh, all of my images, except one, uh, are, are free of camera shake and haven't been bumped or anything. So they should all be aligned as is. Um, but uh, if you want to mess with that setting, you can if you want to and see what effect you get. Um, but we're not going to need this for our purposes. Now we're going to hit OK. And over here, you can see that Photoshop is importing each of those files into this workspace. Each file is now its own layer in the workspace. And it should be done momentarily. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to select all of these layers so uh, start with one at the top, uh, scroll down to the bottom, shift, click to select them all. And then once they're all selected, we're going to go over to uh, blend mode and change it to lighten. Okay, this is really important. Uh, what lighten does, if you're not familiar, is it looks at the pixels for each of these layers and it selectively saves all of the lightest pixels from the image. Um, and, and so essentially if there's two layers and, uh, and, and in one pixel, in one location, uh, in one image it's light and in the other image it's dark, it's going to dispose of the dark pixel and replace it with the light pixel. And so we're just, we're just preserving all of the lightest pixels from all of the images. And so what we wind up with is this kind of an effect where we've just got tons and tons of crazy light trails all over the image. Over here though, in the sides um, where uh, the, the trees are dark, uh, you can see that not much changes because there, there isn't any light pixels over here to, to lighten up the trees. Those are gonna stay dark but everything else is going to get a lot brighter. Um, and this creates a pretty cool effect. Um, it, it's up to your taste, but um, uh, when I do this work, uh, what I find is that if I've got dozens of shots to work with and I blend them all together like this, the resulting effect is to me uh, too much. It's, it's too chaotic. Um, there isn't enough definition to it. Uh, it just looks a little too insane. And so I tend to pare down my options to maybe three or four uh, files that I think uh, um, uh, look best uh, combined together. And, um, and so I'm going to show you that process here. So first what we're going to do is we're going to deselect all but one of our images. And then I'm going to go over to the eye over here. I'm going to right click and hide all other layers. So now we're just back to one layer, okay? So this is a perfectly fine layer that we've got here. Um, now remember, uh, this is the layer that we took that has some camera shake in it. And you can see that this is it because you can see that the, there's a car light trail over here that's off, slightly off, um, from the other layer and so that's our that's our um, and you can see it over here on the bridge too um, this is our camera shake layer and so I don't I could potentially work with this and I can try to hide the um, 
the camera shake over here with masking. I could potentially do that, but um, in this case, because I've got so many other uh, great layers to work with that don't have camera shake, I'm just going to ignore this layer. I'm not going to work with it. Uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to start um, turning on and off other layers and I'm going to see which layers I like. Okay, so I might look at this and go, oh, that's a pretty cool layer. I, I like uh, the kite, what the kite's doing there. Uh, I'll keep that, you know, and oh, that's a good one too. Um, this is a good one. It's a good one, you know, um, and it's, it's just all going to be up to you. This is the time to be creative. And, you know, maybe I like uh, this one, adding this one because I don't know, uh, it, it adds some, some light effect over on the right side of the frame, and so it's not totally blank over here. Um, now we've got light everywhere. You know, alternatively, uh, we could uh, add some layers here that are just in the middle of the frame, and then we could crop the rest of this out. You know, we could crop um, all of the, the blank space over there, crop it down, and um, and that would look nice. Whoops. And that's one option. But let's let's uh, let's ignore that for for today. Um, you know, let's let's stick with this idea. So we've got right now we've got what three layers combined together um, that we're going to work with. What's the next step? Well, you've got a couple of options. At this point, what we could do is start um, uh, uh, color correcting and uh, and applying layers to uh, uh, to the layers that we're working with. So, for example, we can come down here, create an adjustment layer. Uh, uh, let's create a levels layer, and we could work with um, adjusting our midtones. That's often what we want to work with in order to kind of help to separate the highlights of the lights from the background. Um, if this uh, image was entirely black in the background, like let's say I, I shot my pictures against a dark night sky, um, uh, this would be an easier process. Um, I could fairly quickly get the lights to, to really pop and separate. But because I've got this, this fairly bright sky here, um, it's going to take a little bit more effort to try to separate the lights from the background and make them really stand out. Uh, one way of doing that is to reduce your midtones. That way you're preserving the lights and your shadows. You don't have to mess with the shadows. They're already dark. So it's your midtones that you usually want to worry about. Um, and again, you can you can mess with this depending on on your taste. Um, I'm trying not to totally darken the river because I want to get some of the reflected light down here. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Um, another way to do it would be to add uh, a, a luminosity mask to start helping us to tweak things. Um, but uh, and I'm gonna, I'm going to show you that. But first. Um, uh, what I would suggest is using this opportunity to um, eliminate any distracting elements that you don't want, okay? So let's say, for example, you can see here that there's this uh, kind of um, ghost image of me here uh, that you can see. And uh, maybe, you know, you like that effect and you want to keep it. But let's say we didn't want that effect and we wanted to get rid of this ghost image. Well, how could we do that? Um, well, what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask and we're going to eliminate it that way. Um, first, we have to figure out what layer it's connected to. So we're going to turn on and off layers. Uh, okay, so I turn on and off this layer. That tells me that it's this layer that has the ghost image. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mask. So there's a button down here that allows you to create a mask. Mask is here. Then we're going to go up here. We're going to select a brush. It needs to be on black. 
We can adjust the size of our brush if we want. We can make it bigger or smaller. So let's say uh, we want to eliminate this ghost image here. So I go here and I kind of brush it out. Okay, well, I got rid of the ghost, but I also wound up getting rid of some of the river reflection and some of the lights, and I created a sort of an odd-looking hole here. Uh, what do I do about that? Well, uh, I've got options. Uh, one option would be, okay, well, I'm just going to uh, mask out everything. I'm going to mask out this whole uh, river here and list the whole layer C. So now you can't even tell. Uh, it, it all looks the same. But I actually don't want to do that because... Um, I, I like the added reflection in the river here, so I want to try to keep that if possible. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to refine this mask a little bit. I'm going to switch to white so I can reveal some more, and I'm going to reduce the size of my brush and see if what I can bring back without messing with the, without bringing back the, um, the uh, ghost image. Okay, so I brought back some, but here, I'm starting to get that ghost back again. So what do I do now? Well, um, a way to kind, of, to, to kind of cheat it a little bit is to kind of soften uh, my mask here, blend it better so that it's less obvious. And the way to do that would be to go up here to the opacity, bring it way down, like around, I don't know, 15%, 20%, 30%, uh, I don't know. And um, I'm going to switch back to black. And I'm going to kind of gradually remove parts of this ghost image and, and the space around it. I'm just kind of soften the mask so that now the, the ghost is gone but I've still preserved a lot of the reflected light in the river, okay? And I could do the same thing with the light trails up here. So maybe there's a part of the light trail that I don't want. You know, let's say I didn't like this streak over here for some reason, and uh, I felt it was sort of uh, throwing the composition off. Well. I can go up here to uh, increase my opacity again. I could, um, um, oh, <clears throat> so it's not working. I'm, I'm clicking here, but it isn't working. And the reason why it's not working is because um, this is the wrong layer that I'm working with. So, so this is the layer I'm working with, um, but the streak is over up on this layer. So I have to switch to this layer, add another mask, and then come back over here and brush that out. Um, so that's how I would do that. I could, I could eliminate, uh, that I could, let's see, uh, what it's something else. I don't know. Um, you know, I could, I could soften the edges up here, uh, instead of making it so hard, I could bring down the opacity and I could sort of soften the periphery a, a little bit here. You know, maybe I like the look of that a little bit more instead of that, that hard look. You know, it's just creating a little softer, softer effect here. Maybe um, over here in this part, maybe it's just a little too busy, like there's just too much overlap of, of different streaks and it's getting a little too crazy. So what I may do is try to kind of soften that up by, by keeping the opacity low and um, and then brushing through here just a little bit over and over until I get the effect that I want. Okay, so now it's a little less intense over here, and, and I like that a little bit more. Okay, um, this would also be an opportunity to eliminate any um, uh, unwanted uh, external elements. So, for example, uh, uh, car lights, you know, so we've got these streaks of, of of car headlights coming through over here. Now, actually, I actually kind of like them um, for this image, uh, and, and so I would probably keep them. But let's say that I, I didn't want to keep them. Um, there are multiple ways to, to get rid of them. Um, I could uh, burn in those highlights and, and darken them out, okay? 
So I could use the burn tool over here, burn tool, and I could darken those highlights that way. Um, I could also potentially mask them out if they were only uh, on one layer. So uh, let's, let's come back down here and select this mask. Um, I'm going to bring my, go back to my brush, bring the opacity back up, and then I can brush. And so some of the, whatever light is, is in this layer is going to get masked away. There's not a lot. Um, looks like there's a lot in this layer down here. So I can go down here, make a mask, and eliminate the light over here. Okay, sort of darken that up so that, you know, so maybe the, the, the car lights don't distract as much from the kite lights. Okay, so, um, uh, so now we've gone through and we've kind of masked out all the parts that we don't want. Um, we could also potentially mask out like stars. In this image, there, there aren't a lot of stars because there's, there's a lot of clouds in the way. But let's say it was a cloudless night there would be a lot of bright stars and there would be a lot of motion blur to those stars. You could um, uh, try to mask out uh, the, the, the stars if, the, if the, the motion blur from those stars was distracting to you. Um, so uh, uh, that's one approach. But um, that could be very difficult and time consuming because there could be a lot of stars hidden amongst um, the, uh, the light trails up here and trying to erase them all or mask them all could be uh, just impossible to do. Um, one way uh, of trying to work around that problem would be to, uh, to create a separate background layer that just has your stars. So um, I'm gonna digress here for a moment. Uh, try to keep up. So if we uh, had a different image where there were no clouds, it was just a starry background sky. Uh, what we would see is a lot of star trails. Um, and even though you might, you might like that effect, usually I don't like that effect. I want my stars to look sharp and in focus. I want my kite trails to be moving and, and I want the stars to be sharp. How do I do that? Well, what I would do is in the field, I would take maybe um, 20 pictures, well-exposed pictures. So I'd probably have to, to boost up the ISO, uh, really open up my aperture really wide. Uh, I want really bright, well-exposed images of the stars, maybe uh, uh, two dozen of them or so. And then I'm gonna process them through some third-party software. And there is software that is uh, designed for PCs, and there's software that's designed for Mac. And in the case of Macs, the, the software that we're talking about is this piece of software called Starry Landscape Stacker. That's the software that we would process those photos through. So what Starry Landscape, excuse me, Starry Landscape Stacker does is it takes all of those um, star photos that don't have any, any kite motion in them. There's no kites in them at all. They're just stars. Um, and what it does is it uh, processes them all in such a way as to eliminate all of the motion blur in the stars. It, it reduces them to uh, single spots. And it also eliminates all of the grain and noise that is, that is created when you try to create a well-exposed shot of the night sky. Because the night sky is very dark, you're gonna wind up creating a lot of grain and noise in those images. Um, so it mathematically, it eliminates a lot of the noise and it sharpens your stars for you. And it creates a final product that you can then save as you know a TIFF or a JPEG. And then I would import it into this stack and I would set it as, as my, my background image. And then what I would do is I would uh, create a, I would mask, I would use masking just like I showed you, and I would, uh, I would mask out all of this sky, okay? And that would wind up revealing the sharp 
uh, version of the starry sky underneath. So I would very carefully uh, mask out the sky while trying to avoid masking out the um, uh, lights. That can be complicated and tricky um, and, uh, <laughs> and time consuming. So I'm not gonna show you that whole process here. Uh, let's come back to this image. Um, okay, so we've, we've done our best to mask out the parts that we don't want. Uh, what do we do now? Well, we can continue to work on tweaking the colors. And one of the more sophisticated ways to do that would be by creating a, a luminosity mask. Um, and a luminosity mask is just a way of creating a mask of just the highlights. Uh, you can also create a mask of just the shadows. But for our purposes, we don't need to create a mask of the shadows. We're going to create a mask of just the highlights. So in order to do that, we're going to select the whole image. So Command A, Command A, then we're going to go over to the Channels palette over here. And we're going to Command Click the RGB channel, Command Click. <clears throat> And there are lots of YouTube videos and websites that show you how to do this um, in case you're looking for more detail. Uh, now you can see all the marching ants here, which tells us that we have selected uh, the highlights of this image. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask from this selection. So you go back down here and it says save selection as a channel. We're going to click on that. Okay, now we have created a channel that just selects the highlights, right? Um, oops, so that, that's from that. Okay, um, now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna uh, deselect that, okay. Let's command click on this channel, the alpha one channel. All right, now we've selected our, our highlights here. Now we're gonna go back to the Layers channel and we're gonna create an adjustment layer. Let's create a uh, vibrance layer. Now what you see is that it created a vibrance layer um, that is based off of that mask that we created. Um, I wanna move this layer up to the top um, and I'm, then I'm going to uh, select the vibrance bar here and I'm going to move this back and forth. Now notice what's happening here. Actually, I'm gonna, it's a little too subtle, so let me select the saturation bar here, see if I get a stronger effect. Okay, there we go. So <clears throat> what you can see is that I'm adjusting the saturation levels of just the highlights of the image. I'm not messing with the saturation levels uh, of the the shadows, um, and, and even really the mid-tones. It's the highlights that I'm, I'm messing with here, okay? So this is just a more selective way of adjusting saturation. So uh, again, the goal here is to try to make the lights from the kite pop while um, maybe quieting down the background so that uh, it doesn't distract as much from the kites, okay? So I've, I've created, I've added some vibrance to the kite lights here, and you can see that effect easily if we turn on and off the layer. It's quite subtle, so maybe we wanna boost the saturation too, okay? You can see the effect. Um, <clears throat> Now, uh, you know, I can see that as I'm doing this that the, whoops, sorry about that. I can see that the, the clouds are also getting pretty saturated and, and that's a kind of an artificial weird look that I'm actually trying to avoid. Uh, I want my lights to be bright. I want my background to look pretty normal. So one way of doing that is to um, modify the mask. So uh, we just have, all we did here was we created a, a mask, a vibrance mask essentially, and, and I can adjust it. So um, going back to my brush tool, 
with black selected, um, I can come over here and mask out the clouds so that my saturation effect is a lot more limited to just the kite lights and not other parts of the image, not the clouds. Okay. So that looks a little more normal. Um, but it's still a little off. Like it's, a little, it's very orangey because of the of light pollution from the nearby town. Um, maybe I want to uh, correct for that. So we could create a, um, uh, a color balance adjustment layer it doesn't need to be applied to the luminance uh, channel that we created, but you could. Um, and we could tweak this so that, you know, maybe the, the sky is a little more normal colored. It's a little closer to, to blue rather than, than yellow. Um, you know, you play around with it and see if you can see what you get you know, you know, now tweaking that that way doesn't change the lights very much, but it does help the sky to look a little more normal. So we can go back and look at the difference it made. See, so it's a little more bluer and um, that looks a little more normal. I kind of like that. Um, we could also create a, um, or go back to our, our levels layer up here and, uh, and tweak this a little more, uh, bring our midtones back down. We could, uh, alternatively, we could maybe create a contrast layer. That would be another way of kind of accomplishing the same thing. Uh, increase the contrast. We're trying to increase contrast without losing our um, highlights down here the colors in the river. Um, so that's looking nicer, but even, even doing all this, you know, it feels like there's not a lot down here. There's not a lot over here. So I, I think what I'll do is I'll probably crop this. Okay. And, um, in order to, to, uh, preserve these details in case you want to go back and, and reverse this, make sure that the delete cropped pixels, option up here is not selected. Okay. If I do this, then when I crop it, it's going to be, I'm going to permanently lose those pixels and I won't be able to change my crop later on, um, without undoing lots of changes going through the history uh, panel. Uh, so instead I'm going to, I'm going to uncheck that and then I can preserve my pixels and, and just sort of play around with the crop and see what looks best. You know, uh, that looks pretty nice. Select that. Okay. Um, so, you know, um, uh, if, if, if this were a serious project for me, I would spend a lot more time on this. I might spend a couple of hours, uh, you know, fine tweaking different settings and, um, and masking and stuff like that. Um, but this, I think, gives you a, a pretty good sense of uh, some of your options. And once we were all done with all of this, um, you know, and we could we could still even play with adding more layers again. We could come back and and um, and see if you know adding more, you know, helps or hurts our overall look or you know whatever. Just sort of experimenting with it, but. You know, let's say I, I want to keep it as is. Um, at this point, um, we if we if we feel like we're we're done with this image, um, we could go up here to layer flatten image. It will ask us to discard the hidden layers, and yes, we want to discard our hidden layers. And now we've got one simple image that we can easily export as either um, a TIFF or a JPEG, 
to the desktop. Uh, let's save it as a JPEG, let's say. And that's it. So here we are. There's our final image. I hope that this was uh, informative and helpful and gives you some ideas about um, uh, options that you have and ways to be creative in this process. It's really fun to do this kind of photography and, um, and, and every picture is different and so, every, and, and so the challenges are going to be different depending on, on what kind of a background you've got, um, how dark it is, how bright it is, if there's distracting elements, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So um, uh, this is just one example, but um, uh, if you have questions from any work that you're doing, feel free to drop me a line. And if I can, I will try to help you out. So uh, good luck with this and hope this was useful. Thanks.